In tonight's headlines, commuters in the city are told to leave home earlier tomorrow to avoid traffic jam as students across the city will be back to school tomorrow. Chief Executive John Lee visits the Kai Tak Sports Park, envisioning it to bring strong economic benefits to the city. And Israel and Hamas hold fires for limited time for three days to allow the World Health Organization roll out their polio vaccination plan for children. Hong Kongers are told to stay alert for increased traffic flow tomorrow morning as the new school year starts tomorrow, especially those students attending new schools. The Transportation Department reminded students to check transportation schedules in advance and leave home earlier, while students going to a new school should familiarize themselves with their routes to avoid being late on the first day. With the Emergency Traffic Coordination Center operated at its highest level tomorrow morning, traffic staff will be deployed in all major public transport interchanges across the city and school zones such as Kowloon Tong, Wong Tai Sing, Kwai Chung and North Point to monitor conditions, adjust traffic light timings as needed and coordinate with police to manage traffic flow. Drivers are also urged to avoid school areas unless necessary. With the construction work of the Kai Tak Sports Park entering its final stage, Chief Executive John Lee prompted the project task force to ensure timely commission of the highly anticipated project, hoping that it will create strong economic benefits to the city. Lee visited the park with several key officials, including Chief Secretary Eric Chan, Cultural Sports and Tourism Chief Kevin Young, Security Chief Chris Tang, and Transport Chief Lam Sai Hong. The city's chief shared insights from the visit, stating that the park plays a vital role in the development of sports in SAR, such as supporting elite sports, enhancing professionalism, maintaining Hong Kong as a center for major international sports events, developing sports as an industry, and promoting sports in the community. We added that the main structures of the youth sports ground Indoor sports center and main stadium are nearing completion, with internal decoration and landscaping underway. With Kai Tak Sports Park slated to open in the first quarter of 2025, the city's leader hoped that it would produce synchronized effects with various sectors like the show business and tourism, and hence drive the economy. Evelyn by Cable News. Education Minister Christine Choi defended that the sex education materials asking students to play badminton when they have desires for premarital sex is simply a way to instill correct mindsets. Talking to the airwaves, Choi said the materials were made for students aged 12 to 14, and it is utterly important to implement good values when it comes to sex, so they could protect themselves, respect others, and be responsible to their actions. Do we need to follow the foreigners and send out condoms to students?" Choi said. She added that the materials were simply educational suggestions, not policies. Her remarks came after the Education Bureau's newly released sex education teaching materials set off a wave of heated discussions, as the material suggested that when teenagers want to have premarital sex, they should leave the scene immediately or go out to play badminton together. The Bureau also encouraged students to practice sexual abstinence to reduce the chances of pregnancy and emotional turmoil. The city's investments in cutting-edge technology still lagged behind mainland cities, and social capital should participate more in future investments said Secretary for Innovation, Technology and Industry, Sun Dong. Taking to the airwaves, Sun said, over the past nine years, the government had invested more than $200 billion in technology and innovation development, mainly focusing on infrastructure. Although the city's investments in cutting-edge technology reached a record level of 1.07% of GDP last year, 
it still falls behind Shenzhen, Shanghai and Beijing, which invested more than 5% of GDP, he added. The minister highlighted two directions. Firstly, the government needs to strengthen high-quality development to create more room for growth in science and technology investments. Secondly, he emphasized the importance of encouraging social capital, such as enterprises and industries, to invest, citing Shenzhen as an example where over 90 percent of investment came from the different industries. He explained that this will create a virtuous cycle where demand from the industry drives technology development, in turn promoting further growth in the sector. Additionally, the government has successfully achieved its goal of attracting 100 strategic enterprises in two years, three years ahead of the schedule. Sun indicated that the next steps would be to assist these enterprises in lending and operating. Evelyn by Cable News. From today onwards, anyone caught feeding feral pigeons will receive an on-the-spot $5,000 fine instead of just a verbal warning, following the end of a one-month grace period after the ban was imposed on August 1st. The sightings of feral pigeons have significantly decreased as some black spots in Changshan Wan and the Star Ferry Pier in Chimsa Choi on Sunday. The Wildlife Protection Amendment Ordinance, which took effect on August 1st, extends current feeding bans to cover wild regions and introduces a $5,000 fixed penalty system. Enforcement officers will step up patrols at various locations upon receiving reports and consider prosecutions instead of the fine in serious cases such as those involving repeat violations. The maximum penalty for violations has also been increased by nine times to $100,000, in addition to one year behind bars. The Mandatory Provident Fund Authority said it had issued over 370,000 payment notices to urge employers to pay their MPF default contributions and helped almost 100,000 employees get back their hard-earned money last year. The MPF watchdog said in its annual report that, up till the end of March, which marks the end of the 2023-24 financial year, there were 76,000 voluntary contribution accounts in the city, carrying a total contribution amount of $10.51 billion. Throughout the financial year, the watchdog had inspected 1,234 companies and issued 376,300 payment notices regarding MPF default contributions with a total of $155 million in default contributions for 96,600 employees recovered. Welcome to the new digital era of MPF. Meanwhile, following the launch of the EMPF platform in June, the watchdog aimed to have all member account data migrated to the platform by the end of next year in a bid to enhance operational efficiency and reduce administration cost. In Taiwan, the Taipei District Court would decide later today whether to formally detain chairman of the People's Party Ko Wenzhe over an alleged corruption scandal regarding a property redevelopment project in Taipei during his tenure as the city's mayor. Dozens of supporters continue to gather outside the Taipei District Prosecutor's Office. The police issued warnings, holding up signs to indicate that the assembly was illegal and requested the crowd to disperse. Ko was arrested on Saturday morning after he refused to be further questioned following 12 hours of questioning since Friday. As he attempted to leave the prosecutor's office, prosecutors were worried he might collude with others involved and make false evidence, and thus requested the formal detention and restricted visitation of Ko.
The former Taipei mayor and his former deputy Peng Chengsheng were accused of accepting bribes related to the core Pacific city development, of which his then government allegedly received large sums of money to significantly raise the floor area ratio, resulting more than 100 billion new Taiwan dollars worth of profit for the developer between 2014 and 2022. Meanwhile, Pong was rushed to the hospital this morning after vomiting and feeling unwell when he was reviewing trial materials. Jeremy Zhu, Cable News. Israel and Hamas have agreed to a series of localized poses in fighting starting today as United Nations agencies kicked off a vaccination campaign for 640,000 children in Gaza against polio. This came after a 10-month-old baby was paralyzed in one leg by polio, the first polio case in 25 years reported in Gaza. The World Health Organization's campaign targets children under 10 and aims to vaccinate at least 90 percent of them. Director General of the WHO Tedros Ghebreyesus said that the campaign will start in the central area of Gaza, subsequently moving to the southern part of the street and finally in the north. Around 1.3 million doses of the vaccine were preserved in cold chain storage to prevent from losing its potency, while another shipment of the 400,000 doses will be sent to Gaza soon. WHO said each child will receive two drops of oral polio vaccine in two rounds, and the second round needs to be done in four weeks. In Han Yunis, a southern city in Gaza, which is the highest in the population density of children under 10 years old. A small number of children received oral polio vaccine in advance on Saturday. Meanwhile, other parts of Gaza remained on edge as Israel launched an airstrike in the Nusrat refugee camp in central Gaza, killing at least 13 people. Evelyn Bai, Cable News.